Hello, fourth graders. Today for um, episode four, we are going to focus on the skill pitching today. So last class, you guys earned your research wedge. Um, you did some research on some different inventions like the light bulb and paper and the airplane. We're going to do a little bit more research today on the radio, and we're going to use that invention to practice pitching an invention. So first, we're going to read the radio. Before the radio, wired. For most of the 19th century, many Americans lived fairly isolated lives. They may not have ever traveled more than 20 or 30 miles from their homes. For entertainment, they visited with neighbors, played cards and games, and maybe danced, sang, and played music together. Concerts and the theater were mostly for those who lived in cities. People didn't have much reason to communicate with those outside their communities, and when they did, it was by mail, which could take weeks or months to arrive. In 1861, the Western Union Company completed the first transcontinental electric telegraph, connecting the east and west coasts of the United States. The telegraph was a machine that sent coded messages over a wire in the form of electricity in a matter of minutes. A telegraph operator tapped out the message in code in one city, and then a second operator decoded and wrote down the message in another city. At the time, the telegraph was the fastest and most efficient means of communicating over long distances. But putting up with the wires and making sure they stayed up was so expensive that telegraph companies did it only where there were significant populations. This left many Americans who lived far from big cities out of reach of the telegraph. Inventing the radio, wireless. In 1894, a young man in Italy named Guglielmo Marconi read a book that explained electromagnetic waves. That's electricity that travels through the air. He reasoned that if electricity could travel through the air without a wire, then he could send telegraph messages wirelessly. He quickly got to work in his attic building a wireless transmitter to send messages and a wireless receiver to receive messages. Soon, Marconi was sending wireless signals across the room, and by 1895, he was sending them over a distance of ma a mile and a half. Marconi wrote to an Italian official asking the government for money to help him further develop his invention. The officials thought he was crazy, so Marconi moved to England, where he found people who believed in him. In 1898, Marconi sent a wireless message across the English Channel to France, and in 1902, only eight years after he built his first machine in the attic, Marconi sent a wireless message all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. Soon, scientists and business people realized that the future of Marconi's technology was in sending sound directly to receivers in people's homes. These receivers were called radios. How the radio changed things. Radio waves of the future. The first commercial radio station began broadcasting in 1920, and by 1930, long before televisions were available, radios were in 12 million American homes. Radio stations broadcast news, music, comedies, adventure shows, game shows, soap operas, talent contests, almost everything you can see on TV today. Lots of families gathered in the evenings to listen to the radio the same way many families now watch TV together. And along with the movies, the radio created national celebrities as many radio performers became superstars. Today, the electromagnetic waves that Marconi's first sent across his attic are also used for cell phones, GPS, radar, and TV, including Eureka, and even to control satellites in outer space. All right, so when we are pitching, here are Hetty's rules. So we need to be focused on our topic, be specific, be interesting, and we're going to speak by making eye contact, showing energy and passion, and watching our volume and speed. All right, so you're going to tell me, what does the radio do? When was it invented? So that's a date. How it was invented, so what were the steps? What did they have to invent 
before they can invent the radio. How did the radio improve life? There's actually a whole section right here, how the radio changed things. And number five, you're gonna write your slogan. So a slogan is a catchy sentence that grabs your audience attention. And I gave you some examples here. So Apple has a slogan called Think Different. Dunkin' Donuts' slogan is America Runs on Dunkin'. Um, I'm loving it. That's McDonald's. Just do it is Nike. So these are short sentences that grab the reader's attention. So you're going to do this for the radio. So think of a short slogan that you can have for the radio that would draw people in, make them wonder, hmm, I wonder what that is. I want to get myself one of those. Okay, now you're going to make a skit. So we have our slogan. You're going to make a skit, kind of like a commercial for your product. So you can choose one of these ideas. You can either show me how people lived before and after your invention was invented, or you can do a pretend interview with the inventor. So you're going to either make a skit showing how life was before the radio and how it is after the radio, or you're going to pretend to interview the inventor of the radio. So who are your characters? If you're doing a before and after, it might be a family, it might be a group of friends, it might be a class. If you're doing an interview, it's going to be you and the inventor. What is the setting? So where does it take place? And what is happening in your skit? So again, you're trying to show just how important this invention is. So think about what was life like before this was invented and how is it better now? Okay, that is it for reading. We're going to go over to skills. Got a couple vocab words. Practical is an adjective that means useful. K, oh, I don't speak French, guys. K gienge is French for what bad luck. K merveille is French for how marvelous. A stylus is a pointed pen shaped instrument used to make an imprint on a surface. So like if you have a little stylus for an iPad, it's like a little writing utensil for um, touch screen. Très magnifique, I know that one, French for really wonderful. So we're going to read about Louis Braille, and you guys are going to answer those same uh, six questions. So you're going to tell me what is his name, when was he born, where was he born, what inventions did they create, a challenge or disappointment that the inventor faced, and then one interesting fact. So this is Louis Braille. Bonjour, where to start? Well, I was born on January 4th, 1809 in Coupe-Fray, France, a small town not too far from Paris. When I was a child, my favorite place to play was my father's workshop. Oh, it was très magnifique. He made saddles and harnesses for horses. I'll never forget the wonderful smells and sounds of the leather and the tools, but these simple joys would not last. The entire course of my life changed when I was only three years old. One day, when I was using some of my father's tools, I managed to poke myself in the eye. But this was not just any poke. Que guien. What bad luck. The eye became infected and the infection spread to my other eye. By the age of five, I was completely blind. While it made learning more challenging, being blind didn't dampen my desire. As you, pro as you probably hunger for chocolate or pizza, I hungered to read. Unfortunately, at that time, books for the blind to read by touch were scarce. They featured giant raised letters, but they were very heavy, difficult to produce, and not at all practical. Consequently, Almost everything I learned from books was read to me by my teachers at the School for the Blind in Paris. Then when I was 12, a French army captain named Charles Barbier visited my school. He told us about night writing, a communication system he'd invented for soldiers on the battlefield. Night writing was a complicated coat of dots pressed into paper, and I do mean complicated. The system was so hard to learn that the army gave up on it. But it got me thinking. What if there was an alphabet for the blind that could easily be read but didn't have to be written in extra large letters? And what if blind people could also write in this alphabet without using big clunky machines? 
Transforming night writing into this new alphabet became my mission, and by age 15, I had done it. In my new system, each letter was represented by a simple arrangement of tiny raised dots. Just as I hoped, my invention allowed full-length books for the blind to be lighter and smaller, and so they were much easier to print. And even more importantly, my alphabet was very easy to read by touch, and also gave the blind a, special, a practical way to use to write using only a, a simple stylus. In the years that followed, I added to my invention so that blind people could read and write music and mathematical equations. The Braille alphabet caught on and Braille books have been published all over the world. K. Merivielle, it is incredible. Don't you agree? All right, so you're going to answer those six questions about Lewis Braille, and then that is all for today. Hope you have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye.